people are opening up <laughs> in unexpected ways. You seem like the creepiest therapist ever. Good morning, Future Bing. Today we are shooting the first wave of interviews for this series. In about an hour, I'm gonna be heading to the YouTube space. I'm just uh, getting everything sorted, getting batteries charged, getting equipment laid out so I don't forget anything. Uh, who have we got today? Today we are interviewing Gio, Jenny, Marie, Mandy, Daisy, Lewis, Johnny, and Dave Benson Phillips. That's a weird one. How's it going? It's going very well. Hey. How are you? Good. I'm very um, scatterbrained and busy. <laughs> Um, but, but loving it. Nice. I'm most creative when I'm all over the doing place. shit all over the place. Okay. Yeah, I've discovered this. Yes. Which one are we in? We're in. Um, yeah, we're in stage one. Cool. Oh, you got to use my thing. There we go. There. Beautiful. This is so much more space than we need. <laughs> you can measure it in Marie's. That's what. What is that like? I would say this is about six Marie's by five Marie's. Yeah? If I lay down. Standing yeah. up, it's like 400 Marie squared. Yeah, right. yeah uh, just have it like, have Dave there on yeah. the white with the lovely white background. This is a and just like. To 120, so it is quite white. Crash it's zoom. Really <laughs> crash zoom on him. We like have that. the option of a green screen, so. <laughs> Shit. Okay, so all the interviews are in space. <laughs> I think we've got this. I can key in. They're talking about their lives, right? They're talking about uh, like the future. So yes. I can, in a year's time, I can just key in footage of them a year older behind them oh, i could have i could have them in a year's time like kind of crossing their arms and like like disagreeing they're... with what they're saying i think that's it <laughs> you have to wait for them to get older significantly yeah ask some people to grow a beard people have asked me over the years why i don't do it for longer like a longer gap because yeah. it would never come out <laughs> Because it would, it would. I want it to. I want to be alive you when it comes out. You would have lost the SD card by the time you were older. Yeah. Where's the footage? You're, no. you're relying on me to keep that footage backed up for yeah. five years. This, you just live here, right? Yeah. Basically, you just yeah, know everyone. This is your home. This is great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Sammy? Excuse me, man. Why are you closing my <laughs> Ah, yes, Super Bowls. Go Eagles. Am I right? They won though, right? Yeah, they won. So I, I like the winning team. <laughs> no, I got no time yeah, for losers. Because they've been winning for a while. Okay, but yeah, right. Okay, but Eagles won this year, so that means put money on Patriots Eagles. next year. Yeah, absolutely. Patriots next year for sure, they're going to want it back. Uh, I've got you like head and shoulders. It looks quite nice. Do you mind if I film? No, no, do you mind if I film? No, go for it. Uh, so, this is Marie. I've got to tell you, I've got cold hands. I'm very Oh, don't worry. One of the best things about today is seeing Dave's reaction to being in the YouTube space for the first time. Especially since he's had such a long career in traditional television. The first thing I knew about television is the, the box of light in the corner, the magical window, as it were. And as a kid, you know, you're glued to it. You grow, you, 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 it's a part of your life. And uh, coming from a West Indian background where, you know, my parents didn't really grow up with television. It was all about the radio for them. And so they couldn't understand what the fascination was for myself and other children of that generation were. And especially the fact that I used to watch it a lot and I always wanted to do stuff. I, you know, the, the way that I learned to interact with people was a lot due to television and, and Sesame Street and stuff like that. So that's what I grew up with. It's basically a time capsule interview. So he's interviewing me now, yeah. talking about what happened to me the year before, yeah. leading up to this point now. Yeah. The next thing that's going to happen is the interview is going to be more or less uh, bottled yeah. until a year later, where I'm reintroduced to said questions from the year before. Yeah. So I'm coming here full of the joys of life. And then a year later, it might be, so Dave, how did it work out? Like, nah, mate. <laughs> <laughs> it's so cool to hearing someone else explain my project. <laughs> you see, that's the whole thing about a pitch, isn't it? I mean, yeah. I, was, I was taught by a, a, guy, a great guy who's sadly no longer here called Jeremy Beadle. And he said, mm. if you can explain a pitch 
in eight words or in a paragraph that has three commas straight through. Yeah. You sort it. Lewis has arrived. Hello. <laughs> this, this is amazing. Yeah, blowing your little mind, isn't it? <laughs> Free as well. I'm gonna like hop on your back. Yeah, man. Feel free, man. We were in theatre where there is no money. Yeah, this is crazy. Hey. Look, look at this rig, it comes down from the ceiling. Like, it moves down, Lewis, and you're getting like six guys. Lewis, you have the face for YouTube. We can make you YouTube famous. <laughs> I, I actually would. And then the that. thing is, you'll get YouTube famous, and then I'll be riding your coattails. And you're like a Olive Jack Howard. You're like a that's slightly. Really that's that's that, is, that is your face bar. Now I'm gonna go like look up who Jack Howard is. Yeah. No, I know who Jack Howard is. <laughs> <laughs> he's not watching. He's really, he's really not watching. You know, cut to years later. Um, you know, I get to work in the industry, but before then, I was still watching it as a viewer. And there were programs that I was drawn to, and they were great. You know, they were of the age. You know, it was a magic age, and yeah, and seeing things like children's TV programming, like the idea that you know, one day there'd be in my lifetime a live program that you could phone up and interact with and win prizes from, or you'd have a presenter talk to you know, down the phone line, or you could talk to your pop star down the phone line. And you know, it was, it was, it was wild, it was mind blowing at the time. Making it is just so different now. That's the other thing, where back in the day when we used to make a children's program, there were lots of people involved and they all had their own departments. So you had the people who would come up with the program and produce it. You'd have them having the researchers who'd research the projects. You'd have other people involved. By the time you get to the presenter, the whole program's more or less made. It's this that's filming time. And then you get the presenter working with the camera crew and everybody else. And then at some point, once the programs are made, you know, you, you take them to the editor, the editing team will sit there and they'll sort them out and the next thing you know, somewhere down the line, thanks to a bunch of people, you've got a programme. Whereas now, you know, you can have a team of people, but they wear loads and loads of hats. So you might have like half a dozen people and they might be doing the work of like 20 odd people to bring out a programme. The way that I've seen television go from that to this is amazing. Look at me, I'm so good at this. Oh yeah, is that legit? Oh yeah, it's a beautiful dinosaur. Don't apologize for that. There's an American artist, I'm blanking on his name. He shoots like large format and it's so expensive, yeah. but he stages things like a film. Like it will cost him thousands to yeah. make one photograph where he like blocks off an entire street at night and he hides lights in, in interesting places and he puts yeah. gels on everything and he hires actors. He'll like, he'll like, or audition actors for a photo mm. and he will place them in the frame and he will style them and he will dress them in exactly the right way and yeah. he'll stage it like it's a frame of a film. Yeah, yeah. I would love to do that kind of photography. Yeah, it's very much, it's like the auteur thing, no? Like yeah, kind of like, auteur photography. Yeah, I want to, I, I want to... I have complete control over it. Do you like my Twin Peaks set up here? Yeah. Da, 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 da. People are opening up. In unexpected ways. You seem like the creepiest therapist ever. People are opening We're making up. breakthroughs. I'm kind of scared now. We're posing for a picture for the Twitter. Good Come man. get in here, take a picture of us. Uh, hello. Yeah, I'll put the camera away. <laughs> As a kid growing up, you saw very few black people on the television. Very few black people. And one of the people that was a huge influence, in fact, two of them were huge influences to me, were on a preschool uh, TV program, Play School. They were um, Derek Griffiths, who was a black male presenter, and uh, Flola Benjamin, who's now known as, as well, she's now a dad, she's Baroness. God, yeah. I just suddenly thought about it now, yeah, so that, 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 was, that was huge. You see these black performers, black, uh, black presenters, but like I said, they were very, very few. So cut to the fact that I wanted to be a performer. I wanted to be able to act and perform and stuff. And, and my dad was one of those people who said like, you can't do it because you're black. They won't, they won't have it. They won't listen and everything else. And for some reason, it all transpired that I, I managed to get on television. Uh, you know, I'd done stage stuff. People have seen me doing stuff. And so what was expected of me was an interesting one. The fact that I was on screen, for some people, it was not an easy thing for them to take. You know, being a black person on the screen, especially when I'm performing to children and, and doing stuff which is, you know, teaching them and being a part of their life and stuff like that. So 
for some people, uh, you know, for some people it was a bit too much. For me, my own expectancy had to be that I had to be brilliant at what I was doing. You know, the fact that I'm black, that's enough. But these are children watching, and all they'll see is they'll just see a guy, and they'll find out that his name is Dave, and that he likes doing silly stuff, and that I like watching him do silly stuff. Mm -hmm. And it was the parents who had, some of the parents used to have problems with it. But the fact of the matter was, was that my expectation had to be that I had to be brilliant at the job that I do, and I was very thankful of the fact that I, I'd entertained children for years. It's all I ever wanted to do. Do you feel a shift? Throughout your career, did you feel that change? Uh, yeah, I did. I felt, I felt a shift. I, the, I did feel that shift. I felt as though we were doing some great things in that respect. Um, there, however, there were times when I did work on on jobs where it it was not a good thing. And that was a tough thing to take because, as far as you're concerned, you're you're, you know, breaking barriers and you're doing amazing things and people can see you're doing it. So imagine, you know, my surprise where sometimes it, it it didn't happen that often, but when it did, it was quite an amazing thing to see. Yeah, oh, I hadn't talked about that before. That was, that's very grown up actually. Focus on me. Okay. You Head. Yeah, We're done. It is almost nine o'clock. We're done shooting. Um, Daisy and Lewis were the last and also the best. Wait. Oh, oh yeah, you're here as well. Mandy was also the best. It's because you're here. Wait till you do Phil though. Yeah, Phil's going to be great. The best. I'm looking forward to Phil when he says that he's not going to propose to you. We're done. We're going to go have a drink. Goodbye. See you tomorrow. <laughs>